Hi everyone, I'm Shaylin here with Reedsy. Today is a follow-up to our last video and our second video in writing a thriller. Today we're going to be talking about tropes in the thriller genre and breaking down five different thriller tropes, some of which you might want to avoid and some of which you might want to embrace. So like every genre, thrillers have tropes that recur frequently throughout the genre. This is pretty much a given in any kind of literary genre. Tropes come and go with the trends. Some you'll find just fairly ingrained in kind of the DNA of a genre. When doing the research on these tropes, I actually didn't find as many thriller tropes as I was expecting. I didn't find like huge lists and breakdowns of different thriller tropes. It wasn't a genre with as many defined tropes as I was expecting, which really, really surprised me. But I pulled these five because I think you'll probably be pretty familiar with all of them, and I think they each require their own unique considerations. So the first two tropes are tropes to maybe avoid, and these are both character types, and my guess is you'll be familiar with both of these. The first one is the cold male detective or spy. We're all quite familiar with this protagonist. He's basically the protagonist of every single action movie that you've ever seen. His name is probably like Jack Steele or something. He's usually emotionally unavailable, apathetic, but ice cold and completely unshakable, yet also somehow still charming. He usually has also a lot of guns and he does some morally questionable things like kill a lot of people and treat women badly, but he's kind of like a cool guy, so we're supposed to root for him. He's usually the lead character. He's usually brought in for the job because no one else can do it except him. He's the best in his field, kind of a James Bond type. You know this character. He probably jumps out of a helicopter at some point and something blows up in the background. The thing about this character is that it's just really overdone and we can do better. We could have more interesting characters than this character because the thing is, this is a really common character trope. Like I said, this is like the lead character of every action movie you've ever seen. And a lot of the time, there's not a new spin to this character. I'm not saying don't write a protagonist that goes anywhere near here, but if you do, you need to find a way to subvert those expectations and subvert this trope or add complexity to this character. Because a lot of the time, there isn't much complexity. A lot of the time, what we're given is a character who's kind of emotionally unavailable and closed off and apathetic, but still a badass. And and we're supposed to take that as complexity, but it's usually not enough. Another problem with this character is that it often leads to inherently low stakes. These characters are usually brought into the plot because they're the one best suited for the job. This can bring about pretty low stakes, even in seemingly very high stakes situations, because this character has the optimal skill set to save the day, and we never really doubt at any moment that he's going to succeed. It's very common and very overdone, so in order to do it well, you need to go layers deeper than we often see with this character trope. The second character trope is often a counterpart to the first. We often see them in the same book or the same movie, and it's the young female rookie. This character is probably the previous character's either protege or love interest, or both. Again, we probably all know this character. She's a naive but brilliant young woman who is probably the only woman in the movie, other than the murder victim. She's usually kind of doe-eyed and innocent, but also really nosy and up to the job. She's new to the team, but we're probably told how smart she is. She probably graduated top of her field at Harvard or something, and she wants to prove herself. Her innocent but nosy attitude usually does get her almost killed at some point, but she is also often the one given the honor of solving the case. She's a Clarice Starling type, and look, I love Silence of the Lambs. It's a great movie, but this character type could use with some subverting at this point. <laughs> Again, there's nothing really inherently wrong with wanting to write a character with some of these qualities or who might fall under this role. The problem is just that this is a character we have seen over and over again. And when we see characters over and over again, they often lose depth with time with every reiteration because authors stop doing the work to add complexity to their characters and just rely on this trope and character type that they've seen before. If you want to write a character who falls under this trope, just like with the previous trope, it's really important that you do the work to either find a way to subvert expectations, subvert the character somehow, and most importantly, to add some depth to a character type that's not normally given any. Now let's talk about a trope that falls kind of in the middle, and this trope is just amnesia. Everyone in thrillers is always just losing their memories. It happens in so many thrillers. 
But the thing is, this is also a really tired trope as a result. It's so common. And it can also come across as pretty unbelievable. Now, thrillers can definitely test our suspension of disbelief. But a lot of the time, thriller amnesia is very medically inaccurate. And as a result, it really just seems like a plot device or a way to artificially withhold information from the reader. So again, it's not like you can't include amnesia as a plot point, but it probably shouldn't be your go-to. Make sure it really earns its place in the story, and you probably want to do some research to make sure you're actually writing it in a medically accurate way, since a lot of writers don't go through that trouble. And it leads to this feeling like a bit of a cheap device which is why it gets recycled so often. Now let's talk about a couple of tropes that I think are worth embracing. Yeah, they're tropes, which obviously means that yes, they have been seen before, but just because something is a trope doesn't mean it's bad. And these are two that I actually think work really well. Like all tropes, subverting them is often the best way to succeed. We've got an entire video on how to subvert tropes that I will leave a link to. But these are two that I think are really interesting, even though yes, we have seen them before. The first one is when the characters are all trapped somewhere together. Whether it's a mansion, a cabin during a storm, or say on a train, like in Murder of the Orient Express. Putting all of the characters in an enclosed space can really ramp up the tension and ramp up the stakes because there is nowhere to go. I think part of the reason this trope works better than the two that I warned against earlier in the video is because those were character types and so they could become tired really quickly. This is just a situational device. So if you pair interesting original nuanced characters with a situational trope like this, it won't feel as tired as recycling the same character type over and over again. This is a great trope to pair with an anyone could be the culprit trope. Having a bunch of characters all stuck in one location and they know someone is the culprit, but it could literally be everyone and everyone feels like a suspect, it's just an automatic recipe for super high tension and super high stakes. It's kind of hard to avoid conflict with this type of setup, which is why I think it works really well. And the final trope that I think works really well, yes, it's common, yes, it's been done before, but I think it's been done before for a reason. And it's just when a character is not who you think they are. This is often a great lead up to to a pretty stellar plot twist. When we completely subvert what's expected of a character, we have a character in the story and we think they're one way, but they're actually someone completely different. This could be the protagonist or it could be someone in the protagonist's life. A lot of the time in recent fiction, it's been a trend for it to be the protagonist's spouse. The protagonist is happily married, he wants to start a family, and then they find out that their spouse is actually like a serial killer <laughs> or something like that. These jobs are really interesting because, because they show how someone like a killer might hide in plain sight or how someone might chameleon themselves to fit into regular society. You can create pretty awesome plot twists, pretty shocking moments, and although you have to be careful with this trope to make sure all the pieces are in line and really get kind of all your ducks in a row so that the trope holds up, I think if this is pulled off correctly, it can be a really mind-blowing element of a story. So those are five thriller tropes to avoid, embrace, or just tread carefully with. What are your favorite or least favorite tropes in the thriller genre? Let me know in the comments. I would love to hear what you guys think about tropes in this specific genre. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss any new videos from us. We've got new writing, editing, and publishing tips every Tuesday and Friday. Until next time.